What's going on, everybody? This is Al from PlaybookGamer.com, and today I want to go over defensive formations and personnel tips. Hopefully these tips will give you an idea of how I view formations, how I view personnel, and how you combine that with those formations, how you select formations, all that good stuff. So that's what we're going to go over today. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is that regardless of what defense you pick, as your base defense in dynasty mode, you still have access to every single defensive formation in the game. For example, if your base defense is a 4-3, you still have access to the 3-4, nickel, dime, 4-4, four, 5-2, four, even the 3-3-5, three, three, and the 4-2-5. So don't feel like you are missing out on anything if you go with a specific type of defense. Even if you went with a 4-2-5 base defense, that will be the first formation that will show up when you start picking plays on defense. But eventually, you will be able to find the rest of these formations. And every single play that goes in them, there are not any hidden defensive plays in the game. And speaking of plays and concepts, you are not missing out on anything in terms of one formation having anything super special compared to the rest of them. For example, you go to the 4-3 defense. Every single one of these formations should have the base stuff. A cover 2, cover 1, and cover 0 man. You're going to see a cover 2, cover 3, and a cover 4 zone. You're going to see cover 0 blitzes from all kinds of places. But every single one... Of these formations has these. Even if you go to something like the 5-2, you're still going to see a cover one man, a cover two zone. The only difference you're really going to see with these concepts among the formations is zone blitzes. You're still going to have your standard cover two, three, and four zone blitzes, but you may see them coming from different players. For example, here is Monster 3 from the 5-2, you got a strong safety coming down to blitz and a linebacker coming down to blitz. But if you go to like the 3-3-5, you may have different zone blitzes that comes from, for example, the cornerback blitz. You got the corners coming. But a zone blitz is a zone blitz is a zone blitz. You still got two to three guys coming after the quarterback via blitz while everybody else is going back into coverage. But in the grand scheme of things, there really is a not a whole lot of difference among the concepts between the formations. So don't feel like you are missing out on anything truly special. The next thing I want to talk about is personnel and how important this is. Now, yes, when you go in the dynasty mode and you select your specific defense that you want to go with long term, you still have access to all those formations, but you really have to pay attention to your current personnel. You need to adjust to that more so than the personnel adjusting to the formations that you want to pick. For example, I want to look at a handful of teams that are all, for example, 4-3 defensive based, but may not be set up perfectly for that and or can be used with some other formations you might not have thought of. So let's start off with like Nevada, for example. They are, by the game's uh, standards, they are a 4-3 defense. Now when it comes to a 4-3 defense or any defense for that matter, you got two defensive ends, so there's not much you could do about that. Now, this is their biggest problem right here. Their defensive tackle situation isn't very good. They don't have a whole lot of talent to work with. They got bodies, which is okay, but not very good ones. They got one decent defensive tackle. What that tells me is, hey, if they maybe have some middle linebackers to work with, maybe I can run a 3-4, maybe even a 4-4. So what I would do next is go to the next positions and just see what they have. Looks like they're okay at linebacker or outside linebacker. They got two guys on the outside that are about the same. And then we have this situation, the middle linebacker position. They got a guy at 78, and it's a bit of a drop-off behind him, 72, 68, 68 so on and so forth. But if you notice, they got a ton of middle linebackers. Even if you were going to stick with a 4-3 defense with this team, this doesn't mean that you are not allowed to use the 3-4 formation or the 4-4 or what have you. If I was running this team, I may sprinkle in some 3-4 if I needed it because, again, one thing you got to remember, defensive players do not get smarter or dumber depending on the formations you use. 
You're just moving guys around. So this is a situation where I may even sprinkle in a little three, four. We can keep looking. They got some cornerbacks, you know, that are two guys that are okay. You could probably run some nickel with some of this, which is standard with a four, three. Uh, they got a terrible free safety and it looks like they got a really good strong safety. So one thing you can do, and we're going to talk about this a little bit later with formation subs and sub packages, you may want to, if you're going to experiment with like the 4-4 four, four defense on a couple of plays, you may want to use a sub package where you got a strong safety, put him in there instead of the default free safety. It's just little things like that. The biggest thing you got to remember is who are your best 11 defenders and kind of work from there and use whatever formations that are going to be helpful to you. So the next team I want to look at is Penn State. Let's go over to Penn State. And they are, by default, a 4-3 team. They got a couple really good defensive ends. Again, you got to have two on the field at all times. Defensive tackles. Okay, this is another interesting situation. They got two really good defensive tackles and a, just an okay guy behind them. But the problem here is they don't have many defensive tackles at all. But yet, they're a 4-3 team, and anybody knows who's played 6 enough to know that defensive tackles tire easily. So you're going to have like four defensive tackles probably play in every single game. And this is a bad situation to be in. So if I'm controlling Penn State, and this is my current season, I'm looking at them and thinking, I may need to think about running a little 3-4 just to give my defensive tackles a break. Because again, the 3-4, you just got one defensive tackle on the field. And then uh, from there, I'm going to go look at their outside linebackers. Pretty standard for the 4-3 to 3-4, 3-3-5. You got two outside linebackers at all times. Then you got the middle linebacker position. They got some really good dudes. An 80 and 74, 74. So this kind of tells me I could probably play just a little bit of 3-4 if I felt like it. it. Just to give my defensive tackles a bit of a break. We can look at their cornerback position. They got some decent dudes here. You can at least go nickel. Uh, you may not want to go dime a whole lot because everybody knows what dime. You got four corners. And if you're going to put this guy in there, you're probably going to be hurting at certain uh, times of the game. You look at their free safety situation. Pretty good there. And we're going to talk about a sub package here in a minute with a free safety. And they got decent strong safeties. Now, remember, with like a 3-3-5 three, three, defense, you have... Uh, two strong safeties out there. The same with the 4-2-5. Two, two strong safeties. So I got two decent guys. Both of them are upperclassmen. I may sprinkle in a 4-2-5 or a little 3-3-5, three, three, just depending on my best 11 guys. So again, personnel really matters. Just don't neglect these guys. And uh, just by sticking to two or three formations, you think that only fit your future scheme. Yes, you want to go long-term with a particular defense like a 4-3 or a 4-2-5 or what have you. But you got to think about personnel more than anything else and go from there. Let's look at another team. Let's go to Pitt. Now, Pitt, they got a bad situation at defensive end. They got one really good one, and it's a drop off from there. But there's nothing you could do about that because, again, you got to have two defensive ends on the field pretty much all the time for the most part. There's like a sub package we can look at later that debunks that. They got a bunch of really good defensive tackles. You may want to think about running a 5-2 formation every now and then if you're going up against a run-heavy team or one have you. But they have three pretty good defensive tackles, which is what's required in the 5-2. Again, it's just a formation, nothing more, nothing less. Outside linebacker situation, it's okay. You got, got a couple decent ones there. You look at their middle linebacker situation. They got one amazing middle linebacker. But it's a humongous drop-off behind him. This tells me, for this current season, I do not need to run a 4-4 or a 3-4. I do not want this guy on the field much at all. No offense to him. You look at their cornerback situation. They got two pretty good ones, 84 and 82, but it is a bad drop-off after that. This tells me that I don't care if, a, if an offense goes 5-wide, 4-wide. I may need to stay away from uh, nickel. I'll definitely stay away from dime. It's just a bad situation at corner, so you may want to run a lot of 4-3 if that's your base defense most of the time for that season. They got a pretty good free safety, and they got a handful of strong safeties, not the best in the world. The next team I want to look at is San Diego State. 
Defensive ends, pretty standard or fair. Again, you got to have a two on the field at all times. You look at the defensive tackle situation, it's just okay. One decent guy with another one behind him, you can run 4 3 if that's your base. You're okay with that. Or a 4 2 5. Again, that's just a four down line front. Their outside linebacker situation is terrible. Not good at all. A bunch of guys in the upper 60s. Okay, my first thought is maybe we got some decent corners. We'll look at that here in a little bit. Middle linebacker, they got one okay guy. So your linebacker situation is not good. So even though I'm starting a dynasty with this current team and I want to run a 4-3 defense, I'm not going to do a whole lot of 4-3 of anything this current season because I don't have the linebackers for it. Again, put your best 11 players out there for the most part. Then you kind of work off of that. But look at the cornerback situation. They got one real good stud. Then it's a bit of a drop-off behind him, but it's 74, 74, 72, 70. And these guys are faster and better overall than these outside linebackers. This tells me that I may need to start thinking about running a lot of nickel and a lot of dime. I don't care if you just see two wide sets or one wide receiver set on offense. I'm going to play a lot of nickel. Again, I'm trying to think of my best 11 guys I want to put out on the field. So this is a dime the nickel or a situation right here. Let's look at the rest of their defense. They got two pretty good free uh, free safeties. One of them is really good. Then in the strong safety position, they got one standard due. So this defense looks like a nickel the dime heavy defense. Again, I don't care if you're going up against a run heavy offense. I want my best 11 out there for the most part. So again, to sum up all this, Think about your personnel. I think that's a little more important than the formation. So go personnel first, then formations, and not the other way around. The next thing I want to talk about is offensive personnel. Now, when you are playing the game and you are on defense, this is the only information that's given to you. You get this information right here. It's the personnel that the offense is going to put on the field for that particular play. Now, the biggest thing I look for is the amount of wide receivers that the offense is going to put out there. This tells me pretty much how quote-unquote spread that offense is going to be. For example, this is a two-wide set. Looks like they got one tight end and two running backs. That's probably I formation normal or something. But the biggest thing I want to see is the two-wide set uh, and uh, the one tight end because I like to do some zone blitzing against that, but that's for another video. But two wide set, my first thought is I'll probably go with my base defense. It's the 4-3. If it is, you got two corners to match up those two wide receivers. Now, some people are really dead serious about having to match up corners with wide receivers. You do not have to do that. Again, just thinking about your personnel more than anything else. So when I see a two wide set, I'll probably go with my base personnel and then work off of that. Here is another supposed two wide set, two wide receivers, two tight ends, one running back. Think like ace normal or whatnot. But the biggest thing is two wide receivers. So, again, think about your base defense. Does your personnel match that? Work off that personnel and go from there. So, for example, maybe I got really weak linebackers, but my number three cornerback is really good. I probably want him out on the field more often than not. Now, you, you're showing right here, this is my two-lane dynasty this is my current season where i got little anthony givens who's been an absolute stud for us this season he's a really good corner he is better than my other outside linebacker so i at times i may want to think about playing some nickel against a two wide set again i just kind of want my best 11 out there and it kind of depends on the town that you're going up against but still i see a two wide set you're going to probably stick to your base defense and that would include if you're a three three five team four two five you know both of those they just got two corners so that would work just as well here is a three wide set three wide receivers zero tight ends two running backs you'll see this pretty often this is you know think gun two back slot and such but again three wide receivers is the biggest thing i'm looking for now a lot of people again well, i just mentioned this are dead set when they see that number three they automatically have to think i need three corners out there no you don't if your third corner is terrible, you probably don't want him out there. If you got great outside linebackers that are just a little bit better than that nickel, you may want to stick to your 4-3 or your 3-4 or whatever. Again, your best personnel, that's the most important thing here. And the next one we're going to look at is the 
another three wide set. This is more common than anything else, I guess. The three wide receivers, one tight end, one running back. I see the three wide receiver. My thinking is I'm going to probably have two corners out there or probably three, unless you're doing a 3-3-5 three, three, or 4-2-5. Those are completely different animals altogether. But three wide receivers, if you got three good corners, yeah, put them out there. That's fine. But if you got a better outside linebacker, don't hesitate to use that 4-3 against that three wide set. This is a very common personnel grouping, four wide receivers, one running back. A lot of people are going to look at that and say, okay, I got to run dime to match up my corners and the wide receivers. No, you don't have to. You always see me run a ton of nickel against four wide sets. The biggest reason I do that is mainly because my fourth best cornerback isn't all that great. It's super hard to find good cornerbacks, especially if you got four of them. If I did, I'd run more dime. Again, I'm personnel oriented. In this case, I'd probably run some more nickel. If you're a 3-3-5 or a 4-2-5 team and you got a good group in general, you can stay in those groups pretty much the entire game, especially against these. That's what those defenses are for because you got two extra safeties that can go up against those. But the biggest thing here is don't get so uh, uh, heavy bent on a four wide receiver set. You got to get those four corners out there. No, you don't have to. You can go nickel. Hey, if your corners are terrible, like we just saw earlier with Pitt, but they got great outside linebackers, sneak in a 4-3 against it. Yes, you're probably going to lose a little bit on the speed side, but I'd rather have my best players out there. I've said it a hundred times, but I, I say that on purpose. This is another four wide receiver set. This is kind of rare. It's four wide receivers and one tight end. That's sort of like uh, a sub package for the offense in a sense. But when you see this, 95% of the time, they're probably going to throw the ball. Again, just think about your personnel. If you got a good enough corners, you can go nickel or dime. If not, you may want to keep your linebackers in there. If you got really good, strong safeties, throw in some uh, 4 2 5 or 3 3 5. Here is the five wide personnel. Very simple what they're doing here. They're probably going to throw. At this point, you've even seen me run a lot of nickel against it. Again, if I don't have a number four corner that's really good, I'm not going to go dime. It's just not in my interest to do so. I would go nickel if that's my best personnel set. Or if I got two really good strong safeties, I'll probably sneak in a 4-2-5 or a 3-3-5. Uh, you don't see me do that that often, but it's been a while since I've had two really good strong safeties. But you get my point. We can look at the bigger personnel groupings where it's just a one wide receiver set with either a bunch of tight ends or a running back. In this case, you want to stick to bigger personnel. Think 4-4, four, 4-3. Four, four, Again, 4-3 against this. If I don't have a good number two middle linebacker to run a 4-4, four, four, I'm not going to do it. It's just not in my best interest to do so. If I do, I'm going to run a 4-2 or a 4-4. Four, four. Maybe I got a bunch of good defensive tackles. I may want to play some 5-2 against that. It's up to you how you want to do it. Big thing here, again, personnel. This is another one wide receiver set with one wide receiver, one tight end, three running backs. You're going to see this a lot of times against a triple option team that would have one of those flex bone formations where it's got two halfbacks, a fullback that may run the wishbone, things like that. It doesn't matter. You got to get your best players out there. Hopefully your best players in this situation is your 4-3, you know, 3-4, whatever your base defense is. Or if you got some really good strong safeties and your base defense is a 4-2-5 or a 3-3-5, yeah, you can still stick with this. Sometimes you may want to think about going goal line defense on this. I normally don't like to do that, but that's entirely up to you. And last but not least is the, I guess you would call it the 23 personnel group and you see those numbers all the time your first digit is your running backs your second digit is your tight ends but the big thing here is zero wide receivers good chance this is the goal line formation that the offense is using in that case i'll probably go goal line i've come across a couple of decent things there that you can use that works pretty well against it but maybe you don't have the bodies for that four four i've had some success with it against the goal line entirely up to you but the biggest thing is to pay attention to this and your personnel and try to match up the best you can the last thing i want to talk about is sub packages and formation subs these are great ways to get extra bodies on the field that you normally can't get in with the default formation so let's talk about sub packages first you can hit the circle button on any one of these formations and it brings up 
various sub packages. For the 4.3, for example, this has the weakest of the bunch in terms of sub packages. It's got a lot of flip sub packages. For example, linebacker flip. It just flips your outside linebackers. This flips your corners. This flips your safeties. It's not like they're useless or anything. I mean, if you want to have your best secondary on one side, you can kind of do some of that. Secondary flip, it flips everybody around, defensive end, defensive tackle, so on and so forth. But one thing you can really check out, again, I suggest you go through every single one of these formations and fool around with them. But, like, if you go to Dime, this has got some unique stuff. Right outside linebacker, by default, it's got a middle linebacker right here. But if you use this sub package, it puts your right outside linebacker. If your right outside linebacker is your best linebacker, by all means, use this sub package. We can keep going. It puts your left outside linebacker with this one. Linebacker rush. This is a unique one. It puts your outside linebackers at the defensive end spots. Pretty cool. Then you got cornerback flip, defensive end flip, safety flip. And then you come across some even more unique ones. Free safety dime. What this does is it puts your backup free safety at the free safety spot with your number one guy over here so if you don't have enough corners but you got a backup free safety that's pretty good use some of this whenever the occasion arises same with the strong safety dime it puts in your backup strong safety here and your starter right there again if you got a backup strong safety that needs to be on the field use some of this it's not going to hurt you defensive tackle package and normal so again i suggest you go through every single one of these formations in practice mode and tinker with some of them. Now, the last thing we're going to look at is the formation subs. You go to practice strategy, formation subs, and I suggest you play around with these. And what this does is you can manually put in one guy in for another. A good example of something you may not be aware of is, for this example, a strong safety. Our starter strong safety is an 82 overall. Pretty good. You notice down here are the best available guys for that guy. For that spot what happens if i put in this quarterback who is a supposed 65 overall if i sub him in now look what happens he is a 78 overall at strong safety so the game kind of deceives you a little bit until you actually switch some guys around so again i suggest you go into practice mode test some of these dudes out if you're in a game go into uh, your strategy and fool around. You may get your best 11 guys in there with some of the strangest formations you thought you never would run, like a 3-3-5. You may find a way to get your best 11 with this, and you may want to use some of that for the remainder of the season. Again, just tinker with both the sub packages and the formation subs, and who knows what's going to come out of it. All right, hopefully these tips will help you on your defensive journey. Just don't be afraid to use various formations uh, you got everything available to you. They're just formations. There's nothing more, nothing less. And more importantly, personnel is the big key here. All right. Merry Christmas and have a good one.